Hello heroes, it's Dr. Zeno with Dr. David Martino with 15 Minute Fuel, uh, February, uh, not February, J uh, July 4th edition yeah, of Independence that. Day. We're just in 15 minutes a day for your mind, your body, and your future. All right, so we got Dr. Dave. He is actually, besides my wife, uh, you know, the, se the, the, the first... Uh, Repeat, repeat person yes. on this yes. show. This is so great. I'm honored so, to be here. Yeah, this is this is what we want to do. So today, you know, I just doing a you know on, on Independence Day. You know, we're still going live. Uh, just announcements. We'll do, first, do the announcements first. Uh, this week, we'll start doing uh, reruns of my favorite shows of We Are Heroes. So look out for that. Make sure you go to on Instagram. Uh, YouTube that has all the We Are Heroes playlists and the 15 Minute Fuels. You can also hear this podcast. Um, what's going on over there? You can also hear the, the podcast on SoundCloud, Stitcher, and uh, iTunes. All right, so thanks, guys. So let's talk today about this. So Instagram, I know it's sideways, but you got to get Dr. Dave in there. Um, today, we're talking about freedom from the judge and jury holding you back of your dreams. Because when it comes to Independence Day, and, and, and listen, I want you guys to enjoy the day, but I, I, I want to address a couple things. You know, so it's Independence Day, everybody's out, they're having fun, they're, they're, they're drinking, right? You know, they're, they're, they're decompressing, but there's a lot, there, there's millions of Americans, like, you know, depression is the number one dis, uh, disability in our country. Did you know that? So this country is totally depressed, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why in a moment. And then I don't want today to be something that you're celebrating Independence Day because it's just a day you could be off of work, it's a day you could drink, it's a day you could distract yourself from the reality that you're not living the life you're supposed to live. Right. Right, because oh, it's a day. So, so it's it's something to do to distract me because it's very easy to distract ourselves. And I think because we do live in a quote unquote free country, but it's not like we might live in a quote unquote free country. But there's so many people that are enslaved, not due to other people, but oh, I mean, what I mean is not not they're, they're not enslaved like they're in a prison, but they're actually causing the prison to themselves. Right. And what I mean by that is they're living that secret identity. Because we have we've been raised our whole life, you know, we, we talked about this the other day, that you are value since you were born. Like nothing you needed to do creates more value. You have a hundred percent value, but you are living your life according to the judge and jury of others in your life. Meaning that you, some of you are doing the things you do, you act the way you do, you live where you do, you look the way you do, you drive the car you want to have, um, you speak the way you do. You marry the person you did, you go to the church you think you go to, or even have a job you went to, you went to the school you went to, just because you wanted you wanted the, the, the judgment and the jury of all these other people who thought you should have done that. So we're living our lives according to other people's values, judgment, and, and, and opinions. Well, so how do you create yeah. your own then? Well, that's the thing. Well, number one, we gotta be aware of it, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to be aware of like, holy shit, I am, I, you know, and I think it happens. I think that's the midlife crisis. Right, right. Right, what's the midlife crisis? It's the person's trying to find themselves. Right, right. You know, BJ Palmer, you know, the cool thing with him in, in his 17, when he was 17, 18, he traveled with the hypnotist guy. So he's able to kind of like find himself then and look what happened in his life. He, I mean, really like just his life went like this, but like in our life, I think, because watch, judge and joy, right? We go to school. We go to middle school, junior high, we go to high school. And after high school, you know, what do you do? Well, we gotta go to college, right? right? So we went to college. And then after college, you gotta get married, right? right? So after you get married, then you gotta have kids, right? right? So that's the next step. So, so always the, we, this, is, this is what the movies say. Then when you have kids, then you have the job, then you're like, you're in your 30s. Right. right, so then how do you know when something's going on, like you feel like you're doing something and maybe you're doing it for the wrong reason? How do you know? Is there something you're feeling? There's the, that innate feeling? How would, how would you know that you know it's the right or the wrong thing to do or you're doing it because somebody else thinks you should do it? How do you know? Is there something you can sense within yourself? Great question. And, and, and let me know what you think about this. Anytime I say I have to right. or I got to, or I'm trying to justify the reason why, I don't really want it. Right, right, right. Like, I, I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta do this, or I have to do this. So it's, it's, it's where I'm justifying. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's got, the, where I'm working, I got good benefits, 
Right. So if you have to do something, there, then automatically there's a there's less joy in it to begin with, right there. There's not a there's not a just a going into it. There's a have to. There's a push behind it, which there's, I get to. Right. And, and and there's a very fine line with just being lazy, and not wanting to work. We're not right. talking about sure, that. Sure. It's just like, well, I you know I have to. Like because it's like, well, someone's you know. You know, it's you know what that feeling what you've been there. To do. It's like, I, I, I'm supposed to do this, or I right. have to, or or you know, I gotta do that. You know, it's just it's almost like well, you're seeing in the way where like somebody else is making you do it. Well, how many? Just think about it, how many great artists ever were great artists because they had to do it. No, <laughs> right, right. You would never become either a Picasso or a, a Van Gogh or any of these people that we can think of. They weren't doing it because they had to do it. That was a passion, and that was just them being them, their authentic selves. Yeah, it just it was downloaded. Right. You know, there, there was nothing getting in the way of it. So, right. and then now this creates insecurity. Right. Because if you try to step out of that. Right. Or pick another job, move to another place, start a different start a different job, whatever that might be, then. You have the judge and the jury, right. which are those people we surround ourselves by or people in our life or the judge and jury could be ourselves right. and our belief system saying, you know, you're not thinking rational. You're you got to think realistic. Come on. You don't have good benefits there. You know, all these things to, to keep you back or you should be doing this. You know, it's right. very easy. My mom and we love her, but you know, in her, uh, you know, in that, in that old world way of thinking, you know, just like we're back, back in my mom's times. Everybody was uniformed, right. right? Everybody wore the hat and the fedora. And like everybody looked the same. Right. They were all uniformed. They did the same thing. It was like, it, but now when we, when we want to express our true potential and who we are, um, when you try to do that, you feel the resistance. Because I noticed that when you start, that's the thing. Because when you start moving forward to this is what I feel I want to do. When you start moving forward, that's when you're. Re, that, that's when those things show up. Of wow, I let all these other judge and juries of my life control me yeah but I allowed it so this is not we're not blaming them it's like well I allowed this to happen and I think when you start going for it you're gonna be more aware of it right because you'll start to like we were just talking before here it's like well if I do this what if someone says this and right, right? so you really start saying well holy smoke you know I'm not doing it for me like right. Drago remember Drago and Rocky four right well it's almost yeah. like usually you know you're leading yourself by doing that and the whole time your whole life you've been watching somebody else lead you say this is what you should do that right. so it might even be a scary thing to do because you mm -hmm. don't know where that's going to where that's going to end up right because no one's ever the seen. security is knowing well if i do this or i do that or my dad tells me to do this i'm getting this approval so that feels right going kind of off into the abyss of where you feel like you mm -hmm. should go that might be a little bit more scary because you don't know exactly what's what's the unknown of what's going to be there right it's like the idea feels amazing and what it could be right. but sometimes the security it's not is exciting but it's it's safe certain and it's certainty right, right right and so it's like we said the unknowns but the unknowns is where the genius is where the innate is where the opportunity at where right. uh, God is at where where everything is at is in those unknowns and what happens is you you shrink and conform to that and then it, it and that's your life it's like that life of quiet desperation right and so there's two things we say we, we want you to be a hero where you're at first, right? So always be the hero where you're at. And then there's certain seasons in your life, but regardless if it's a hero where you're at or that seasons change in your life, you know, there is that thing where you're like, once you're self-aware that there's so, like, what in your life or who in your life has become that judge and jury? Right. That you literally get up in the morning and you live your life because of who are the judges and the jury that you feel are, are with the gavel judging your every action and you're, 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 you're wanting their approval. Right, right. And you realize when you're 40, you're still like that. I get it when you're a kid, right? Because sure. you want the approval of your parents, uh, right? You know, because that's a kid. But then what happens when you're 40 and then you're like, wow. And I think that's where that, mid that midlife crisis comes yeah. from. Yeah, you, you have to take the risk. I remember, I think it was Steve Jobs said, you know, you know, once you realize you're going to die, you know, if you knew you were going to die, all the choices mm -hmm. that you would, you're going to make, you'd make the ones that you really wanted to make you would make you would go forward and do whatever you really wanted to do I remember him making a speech like that. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was something to that effect. You know, we're all going to be we're all going to be dead someday, so you better do what's important to you now and start moving in that direction now because you're going to regret it when you're laying there one day. And and one thing is, you know, I always live with uh not that I'm running out of time, but like I I I'm very sensitive to time. Right. Like time is 
if I could shorten the time, yeah. if I could shorten the time I have and the seconds I have expand the seconds, yeah. like that's the most important thing. So whatever I could do to shorten the time or take the time variable out. Right, right. Because I think at 40, it's like, I want to do so much. I want to go for so far, but I know a lot of things take time and patience. And, and I think just having that awareness of time that it does matter really means something. I think people are numb to that. It's something, you know, some people might not want to look at their finances. They get numb to that. They turn right. away from that. And they might turn away from actual time itself and, and kind of just say, hey, tomorrow doesn't matter, the next day. And every one of those days are really mattering. Man, every day, one's getting chopped off, yeah. chopped off, and chopped off. And then and here you are 10, 15 years later, like the compound effect in some place you really don't want to be. And that's a great thing about time. Like that's... and. Like money can be replenished, right. you know that, right? Sure. Um, you know, I could shave my head, and it could be like. But time is the thing that, like, you're right. Tomorrow, like after today, you're one day short. Like, That's like, it. like, you're, like it's it's not like there's no. We could eat well. That's another thing. Like, I want you guys to be healthy, not because when we eat better, we're gonna add more time. Right. No, it's like we have this much time left. Right. We want to maximize that time. Like right. you're not, we're not getting more time, whatever that is. Right. It's like time's doing this every single day. So I want to make sure that I could put as many amazing experiences in that time I have left. Right. So this is not out of fear. This is out of urgency and excitement and motivation that, you know, I don't want to distract or numb myself from the truth that, you know what, I'd rather go for the risk because I know. I know how things are now because we were talked about that the brain knows what it could lose. It doesn't understand what it could gain. Right. Right. It knows yeah. it could lose yeah. the comfort, the certainty. But how about on the other side, what you could gain? And I'm looking at like all my posters here, like all these all these guys. Look what they gained by like, especially Stallone, like just laying they, it on the line, man. They laid it all on the line. Yeah. And you don't have to lay it all on the line. You just have to move. Yeah. yeah. You have to. You have to take some sort of some sort of risk. You have to have some sort of risk out there. If you're not doing that. Yeah. And so that's where the judge and the jury. So today's about just not an Independence Day of, of, uh, of our country, which is great. But the thing is, you know, even though we're celebrating freedom, many of you watching this, you're really not free. And many of you, if you wanted to, you could go in a closet and cry because you're not free. You're in your own prison because you're letting other people dictate your life, telling you that this is good, this is bad. Like I said, the teachers, the preachers, the belief systems, all these things. It's like, why is their opinion any more important than yours? Yeah. So you know, why do I need to live by somebody else's opinion? Why is their opinion more important? You know, my daughter will say, you know, do, do you like this shirt, Daddy? I'm like, do you like it? Yeah. Why is my opinion more important than yours? You know, do what you want it to. Why should everybody else around me, their opinions be more valuable than my own, right? Absolutely. And that's it. And, and, I, and I think it might stem from, because we were younger, we were seeking, because it's seeking the approval of everybody right. else. Right. And when you could say, listen, this is what I want to do, because I know, like, just and, and not because I've done a lot of things, and I could tell you that most of the things I did, it it may have not come with disapproval, but it definitely didn't come with great approval. Right. You know, like I wasn't supposed supposed to move to Houston. You know, I wasn't supposed to go to chiropractor. Like so, a lot of things like it was, you know, it was somewhat discouraged. Right. So, but if I listened to all those people, where would you be? Yeah, exactly. So, but but that's saying so now I know that because because mm -hmm. there there's been an experience or a few in my life that I could say, okay, so see, I'm on the other side of the risk. Right, right. So that's why I'm telling everybody, at least make the risk. Exactly. And be happy, go go for the happiness factor and be like, wow, I could do this, I could enjoy this, this is what I wanna do, and I, and I, could, I, could, I could feel free to do what I want. So that's what freedom is, and, and I, just, I just felt that, I know everybody's putting those, you know, enjoy your independence and stuff like this, but I just felt the imposing um, empathy. Are you, are you really independent? That, that I think we live under the false assumption that we live in a free country, but we ourselves are not free. Yeah. And that could be the biggest myth and delusion of all is like we're living in a free country, but we ourselves aren't free. And it's something that we allowed to happen to ourselves because of fear and insecurity and the judges and the jury of people that the, the judges and the jury that we set, like we, I set, like I set the judge and jury in my life. Like, like these, you can't blame anybody. It's like, well, I allow them to be the judge and jury in my life. Right. And so we want you guys to become aware and make a step. Like, and you know, uh, here's another one. Today is the, the you know, for, uh, this is halftime. I saw that one, right? You know, they, they treat the year like a football game. Right, so right, today's right. halftime. So how are we going to treat the another half of the year? You know, we have all these cool sayings, but it's like, what you know, you do with it? 10 years goes by like yeah, that. It seriously does. And, yeah. and I really think uh, it goes back to Stan, you know, uh, the, you know, who, who my mom married after my dad, like, 
you know, and it really was. And his, he was 88 years old. And I just said, so, you know, in your, in your, in your wisdom, like what's, what's the greatest thing you could think of? And he, without even blinking, he says, the hardest thing to do in life is to make a decision. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. you could oscillate for 10 years, for, for 20 years. And that's doing something. You feel like you're doing yeah, something. Right, you're busy. And I'm thinking about it, I'm yeah. whatever, and you, you, you procrastinate, and then nothing ever gets done. You know what I mean? But once you make that decision, be, be proud and happy of that, and go for it. And no matter what you do, there's going to be people over here that say it's yeah. good, and people who don't. Like my beard. What did you grow that beard for? I can't stand it. Get off. And then there's people, you know, there's people that love it and people that hate it. But I just do what I want to do, yeah. right? So, I, <laughs> and I knew Dave, and Dave literally, I would say he had the best hair in the world. Like you got it cut every yeah. every week. Every by week, I had Israel, a standing appointment by yeah. Israel, and I used to for like forty five, like an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. After any hair. workout, I'd be going to hypoglycemia because you'd be getting a haircut. Yeah. So you know, it, it's it, it, this is what I wanted to do. This is what I'm gonna do. I mean, it's not a great example of what to do with your life, but I'm just saying, you know. But you know what? Maybe it starts like that. Yeah. Whatever, just be be what you want to be. That's that's a good that's a good call because see, you guys might be thinking, well, how can I make that big jump? It's like, well, how about uh, grow the beard if that was it? You <laughs> right, know, like, right. Because I think it's just a step. Like everybody's trying to go from point A to Z. How right. about getting from point A to point B? So maybe we need a little thing. Like you know what? I'm gonna you know I'm gonna just try this little thing because I want to. Yeah. Remember, I said the only when someone says why'd you do that. Only reason he needs to say is because I wanted to. Yeah. Like desire. It's not rational. It's not logical. There's no research. I wanted to. Yeah. And because that's expressing you. Right. And I love it. And so yeah, Dave's hair went from here to here. He had the best hair in the best hair. Now it's here, but it's like, and I know where he did it. He went to Park City. You were t you were getting some peace time. Right? Yeah. And I started growing. So it, explain and that. I said, yeah. Yeah. I was, I'm in Park City, and I was. So this my, is just you and Ray, right? Me, yeah. Me and my son, we were out there, and I, you know, it's been a week, and I'm like, oh, you know, I shouldn't. You know, I need to shave, and he's like, Nah, dude, forget it, man. You know, you're here, relaxing. And I was like, All right, cool, yeah. I didn't. And then it was like two weeks, three weeks, and I'm like, Hey, I'm just gonna go with this new thing. This is what I want to yeah. do. And then six months, and then I shaved it off again, and then I grew it back. But anyway, I mean, but you guys are getting the thing. This is not about a beard growing thing. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying, like, Dave got out of got out of got out of the judge and jury, so he got out of Texas, went right. to the mountains. Yeah. So weeks. you could find your place for a couple weeks. You know, he went out. He he got out of his surroundings. And so someone you're out of the surroundings, you're kind of like, you know, you could think. Now, yeah. now it's like, now really all that matters is what I think. Right. Because the judge and jury is gone. Right. That's it. There's nobody else around you to influence. It's like I wake up, nobody knows me, nobody knows who I am. And I'm the, the, This is when you did travel. There is no judge and jury. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what you're yeah. saying. So when you go to a place that, you're, that no one knows you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it's like, I wouldn't be standing here had I listened to the people and not taken the risks. Becoming a chiropractor, everything I did, the success that I had, every single person was telling me not to move to Georgia, not to not to take the risk. You know why? Because I was listening to people th that you think that were taking risks or not taking risks. Not. They never took yeah. risks in their life. So how can you listen to somebody who never took a risk? They're not going to tell you to take a risk. They never took it themselves. Right. So that was almost like yeah, I had all this pulling me and I just had something within me to say, go there and do it. So I wouldn't be standing here with Chris. I never would have known when I was making those decisions back then that I'd be here talking on a camera, hanging out with Chris, doing you know cool stuff like this, but it was because I was willing to really do something that everybody else told me not to, and I said, screw it, I'm doing it. Yeah. You know? So there you go, it's in the unknowns, and yeah. you will not see the, the unknown is where it's at, but you don't do it if you don't take the risk. Yep. So guys, have an have a amazing Independence Day, and let this be the one where you fire the judge and jury, and you do the small step to be you, and enjoy being you, and get comfortable. And being you. So have a blessed day. Thank you, Dave, for being here. We're going to go Thanks eat and get some stuff like that. So uh, make sure we'll see, I'll be here tomorrow uh, for 15 minute fuel. We're just in 15 minutes a day. We'll fuel your mind, your body, and your future. God bless.